What is up, y'all? Happy 23.2 tip video to you. Um, let's jump right in here. Exciting workout, I think. It's going to be two parts. You get really out of breath, go really hard, and then you get to lift heavy right after. Some cool things that I think um, is that we've had some experience lifting heavy after a conditioning workout this past few months as we've been prepping for the Open. I personally really love when this happens because... You're just jacked, you're really warmed up, and there's so much adrenaline pumping. And if you've got a good community there, it's an awesome time to experience what potentially could be a personal record, a PR for yourself as you attempt a one rep max thruster. So this is a common theme in CrossFit in these open workouts is that they test the lift after. Um, and it's like you gotta earn that heavy barbell by doing some work before it. So be ready to put your head down and just stay moving. Be ready for something that is gonna be a gut check mentally um, where you're gonna wanna stop moving. The goal of this whole workout in the beginning is just to find some kind of rhythm, some kind of cadence, some kind of pace that just allows you to stay moving without stopping and breaking. You're wasting precious seconds every time you stop doing any kind of movement. And here's an exciting thing. Two of the movements, you're probably not ever gonna fail. Meaning you can drop down and get back up. It's just gonna be like, do you, are you gonna stop and break or not? Um, and that's gonna be the test of pacing. Again, if we just pace ourselves, um, it's doable to stay moving. So keep that in mind. The workout, <coughs> excuse me, the workout's gonna feel easy in the beginning, obviously. You're going to be pumped full of adrenaline and it's going to be easy to go really quick. Try not to do that. Um, go slower than you think you should, especially on the burpees. Do as least amount of work as you possibly can the whole workout. So we'll talk about how to do that in a second. But yeah, um, this is one of those ones where you're just going to go through some suffering and then you get to lift hard after. And there's so much awesome energy that comes from this stuff. So I hope you're excited about that. Anyway, so let's get into the burpee jumping pull-up. So about the burpee first, remember on this one, they're allowing you to step back and step up. You don't have to two feet back. You don't have to two feet up. So you might as well. The only problem that people have on this is if you step up on the same leg every time, you're going to blow up one side of your back. And same thing on the run. If you pivot on the same foot every time, which is allowed, you're gonna blow up one side of your body. And there's a good chance with whatever leg you step forward with, if you were to step forward with the same leg every time, that that's also the leg that you're gonna pivot and turn off of. Try to avoid that if, if you can. Think about it before. Prep how you are gonna turn. Don't just jump into the workout, unless you don't care about this, um, but don't just jump into the workout not having prepped how you're gonna make turns, how you're gonna run and how you're gonna step your burpees, especially if you've been doing the two foot back, two foot forward. Um, so yeah, on the burpee, try not to rest at the ground. Uh, it's really hard to breathe when you're laying face down. Uh, your belly can't expand, your chest can't expand. So don't breathe there, breathe in some stood up position, hit the ground and get back up quick. Um, Try to pop your hips up in the air the best you can also. Avoid doing the up dog, snake up position. Um, that fatigues your upper body a lot more. And you're doing a lot of upper body pushing with the burpee and then some pulling with the, the pull up. And then you're going to need those muscle groups in that heavy thruster. So pop your hip up the best you can. Um, and what we can show you what this looks like if you have no clue what I'm talking about. In terms of the jump, play to your strengths here. If that pull-up is really hard for you, remember you can kip the pull-up, you can jump, catch the pull-up bar with a bent arm and just finish. So if you have a really great jump and you can spring yourself up there, catch, finish real quick and pull, um, that may be a great way for you to RX this workout if you don't have a kipping pull-up, but maybe you, you got a few strict ones. You might as well give it a go for as long as possible, RX. And then if you need to scale, call your score there and start doing just the burpees. But um, remember, you can switch grip. You don't have to go overhand. 
you can switch the grip, um, which may give you a little more strength and it may save your grip at some point in the workout if you are doing the strict style jump catch and pull. You don't probably want to do that when you're kipping, but um, just know that you can, you may try that out uh, because it is a kind of a stronger pulling position for most people. Also, um, again, if your pull is really tough, then use more legs. If your legs tend to blow up, use more arms. Also alternate those two things. So as your legs get tired, give your legs a break, jump less, pull more. If your pulling gets tired, give your arms a break, jump more, pull less. Okay. Um, and then play with how you grip the bar. We always talk about like getting your knuckles to the ceiling. You don't have to quite do that on this kind of thing when we're testing ourselves and going as hard as we can. It's not uh, the best thing to do on your body, but if we're in a competition, you kind of let some of that deviate. Um, so you could just grip here right on the end of your fingertips, and that may allow you to pull from a bit of a different position if things get tired for, and you, get, you jump. You don't have to jump as high if you just barely grip it. Um, and then in terms of wearing grips, if you normally do grips, I would do grips in this workout. Just make sure they don't slip on your pull-up bar. The last thing you want is to have slick hands in this workout. So make sure you have some chalk ready. Um, you slather it all over the ground <laughs> and LeBron James it in the air. Um, okay, that's the burpee and the pull-up. Uh, I'm going through my notes here. If you know that the pull-ups are going to get really tough and you're going to fail, you might as well, you know, pace really well. No need to go fast in the beginning. You might as well, you know, make every rep like it's a, a really heavy attempt at something because that's what that strict pull-up is going to feel like, um, especially if you don't have kipping pull-ups. So pace yourself as much as you need to so that you can just get one rep at a time. And then let's go into the run. Um... Again, we talked about being really efficient with how you're going to turn, running in straight lines and avoid doing like the little stutter step towards the end to slow down. Try to uh, step your, your stride out before you do the workout so that you know exactly how many steps you need to take and go right into a turning step and just changing directions so that you don't have to do the stutter step. If you do that, Stutter step on the slowdown. You're going to blow up your legs more than than is necessary. And you're going to need them because you're going to be jumping, you're going to be running, and then you're going to go into a heavy barbell squat. So you want to avoid doing that because it's not efficient. It's going to be really tough when you get tired, but you're going to have to do your best to take those stride steps and hold yourself accountable to it the whole workout, especially when you get tired. The run is not gonna make or break the workout, so pace yourself, go slower than you think. Again, no amount of speed coming off of the turn is gonna be very important. At some point in the workout, you're gonna slow way down anyway, so you might as well start that way. Um, in the beginning, if you're to go too fast, it's gonna jack up your heart rate and you'll never recover after that because the burpees aren't going to allow it. And you're gonna end up making the burpees way harder than they should be. Same on the burpees. If you go too fast there, you're going to blow yourself up on the run and then you're going to be running really slow, really quickly. So start off slower, especially since the reps are ascending in the burpee. It's going to be easy to go fast in the beginning. And then those sets of 15, 20, maybe 25s uh, are going to get really challenging. Find some kind of cadence on those burpees when they get up in reps. Um... That's it on, on the runs. On the thruster, remember you can power clean it first and then squat down and then drive it overhead. Uh, I'd recommend you squat clean it if you have the technique down. Don't do that if you don't have the technique down. What's going to be critically important in this one, we talk about this all the time when we're coaching thrusters, is that you don't press too early. If you press too early, it's going to be all shoulders and you completely lost your leg drive and your hips. And if you get leg drive out of the bottom and a good solid hip extension and knee extension, locking out really hard, that sends energy upwards. 
if you're holding the barbell on your shoulders like you should and not pressing early and you send all that powerful extension and straighten your body out, that's going to shoot the barbell off your shoulder and you're way stronger from that position than you are if you start to push too early. Also wear a belt when things get heavy. That'll allow you to stay in a better upright position. You're really going to want to avoid getting folded over in this one because it's really tough to push the bar from that point. Bar path is also going to be critically important. If you come off your shoulders and you press this way, it's going to be really tough to get that thing back locked out in the right spot. So make sure you get your head out of the way, push and then punch your head through and then lock out as hard as you can. Punch the bar through the ceiling. Um, the warm-up is also going to be super important. Last thing, let me talk, talk about the thruster. If you know your one rep max, we did go heavy on this at, within this last month. Go start at 80%. Start there. Don't start near maximal load, but don't start too light either. You don't want to waste any type of energy. Do something that's money in the bank that you for sure know you can get. Prime that before the workout begins. Test it out so you know what it is. Um... No worries on going heavy before the workout starts. It'll allow you to kind of get primed and ready. You're going to need a good solid warm up. You want to get out of breath. You want to breathe hard before this starts. You don't want it the first time that to happen during this workout or it's going to be a shock to the system. So warm yourself up really well. The warm up will be on the board. Give yourself time to do it. Give yourself like five minutes to cool down after you do the warm up and then go into the workout. We're going to be able to run four people in one heat. Uh, remember that it's going to be based on pull-up bars. So if you want a specific pull-up bar, you might not be able to get in the exact heat you want if someone else, first come, first serve, gets that pull-up bar before you do. Okay? Um, should you RX it or not? I went over that. So give it a go. If you can do a couple burpee jumping pull-ups, you might as well RX the thing and see how far you can get. Uh, and then continue on scaled once you start to fail, if that happens. All right, send it, y'all. I'm excited for this one. I'll see you there. Gym opens at 4.30, first seat at 5 o'clock. The theme is music festival, whatever that means to you. Throw some glitter on your face. Uh, wear your favorite band t-shirt. I don't know. Okay, see you there.